I've been learning Japanese every single day for the past 5 years without skipping a single day. I have an Anki streak of nearly 1,900 days, averaging around 57 minutes daily, which amounts to about 1,770 hours spent on Anki in total. I've also manually tracked approximately 1,300 hours of Japanese immersion, aka watching, listening to, or reading Japanese content, but I'd say that at least 500 to 1,000 of those hours have been under-tracked, especially if we also throw in all the other resources that I've used for learning Japanese in the past as well. Throughout my entire Japanese learning journey, every year has been quite eventful and this year is no different. For example, I finally reached 20,000 Japanese words aka Anki cards, so I stopped sentence mining entirely, I bought and read my first ever Japanese book and manga, and I also finally started doing daily consistent output practice for the very first time, and those are all things that I want to talk about in this video. So, first of all, I want to share some thoughts on having stopped sentence mining after reaching 20,000 cards. As a slight recap, I learned my first 6,000 words by using the pre-made Core 2K6 k deck, after which I started making my own cards through sentence mining, and it took me around 700 days of mining 20 new cards a day to finally reach 14,000 self-made cards, after which I stopped sentence mining entirely. This also means that I haven't added a single new Anki card for the past 4 months, so my daily Anki grind has already gone down from an average of an hour a day to already only 20 minutes. Last year, I mentioned that once I reached this point, it might be quote-unquote life-changing due to how much extra time and opportunity I'll have once I no longer need to spend around 2-5 to five hours a day on sentence mining and Anki. I imagined that I'll be able to learn Japanese by doing things that I otherwise avoided, such as reading for fun or doing output practice, because my Japanese time budget was already reserved for that specific grind. However, I also predicted that once I no longer have that daily responsibility, the amount of time I'll be spending on learning Japanese on average will most likely significantly drop because other activities such as doing more work and so on will naturally start replacing the hours that before I carefully reserved for sentence mining and Anki. And that prediction ended up being almost entirely true as now that I no longer have a specific daily goal, very often I have days where literally the only thing I do are my Anki reviews that take like 20 minutes, which means that the rate at which I'm improving at Japanese has definitely slowed down significantly. Just as before the biggest problem with my Japanese in terms of comprehension is still the lack of vocabulary, so the most direct and time efficient way to improve would still be to have a daily goal of mining a specific amount of cards, which would also force me to not just immerse, but also immerse with content that's difficult enough for me to actually find new words from. Essentially, I feel like I could still gain so much from going for a total of 30,000 cards instead of staying at 20k, even though I'm aware of the diminishing returns that would make the overall impact of those remaining 10k much less significant than the previous 10k. But it's not only about the words themselves as much as it is also about the daily goal that would auto-regulate the difficulty and quantity of my immersion. For example, going for 30k would require another 500 days of sentence mining and I imagine that it would allow me to reach a level of fluency that otherwise would take years longer, especially at my current pace, but at what cost? That 500 days would be another 1.5 years where I'd have to revolve a big part of my daily life around sentence mining and Anki, which I had already been doing for the past 700 days, and while I definitely made significant progress from that, it was also very restrictive due to how much time and energy it took every day. While 1.5 years isn't a lot of time in the grand scheme of things and I know that I could pull it off, I also have multiple other ambitions outside of learning Japanese that I would really like to dedicate some time on as well, which finally became more viable now that I stopped sentence mining. That being said though, I don't want to sacrifice learning and progressing at Japanese either, which is why I've been once again considering starting to make Anki cards, but this time in an entirely non-committal manner, meaning that I can quit whenever I want, and instead of having a daily goal, I would just make cards at my own pace whenever I naturally encounter a word that I'd like to mine from my own immersion. The benefit of this would be that I would retain the words I encounter much better and I'd actually be able to keep track of my progress, but perhaps most importantly, I'd also be able to continue building my own Japanese dictionary that I can refer to in the future either during outputting or when I want to know the context that I encountered a specific word in, and I actually still use my Anki deck for those purposes pretty much all the time to this day. Ever since I stopped sentence mining, I've encountered so many interesting words and expressions that I wish I could have written down, but purposely didn't because I committed to being done with sentence mining. 
However, I feel like I don't have to go about it in such an all or nothing manner. If I encounter a word that I would like to save to my dictionary, all it takes is a few clicks to make a card for it and in reality I don't even have to review those cards if I don't feel like it as they'll still be in my deck aka my dictionary. Now, this isn't to say that I'm most definitely going to start doing this, as like I said, it's just something I've considered. While I definitely think that I'd get great benefits from going back to the mines, on the other hand, I also feel like the hurdle of immersing has been lowered now that I no longer need to worry about having to create new cards, nor always needing to have my sentence mining set up to be ready to go. I do believe that I can learn new words without Anki as well, but I undoubtedly feel that going about it entirely organically is much less direct and therefore increasing my general comprehension from now on will take much longer, especially considering that the amount of hours I can immerse each day is very limited. Not just that, but like I've said multiple times, very often when I do immerse in those limited hours, I might not even come across a single new word provided that the content I'm immersing with isn't ridiculously difficult, but at the same time, this kind of means that I've already reached my original goal. But naturally, those goals have evolved alongside my Japanese. It's ironic, but the more advanced I get, the more I feel like I'm still an intermediate and the reason why is simply because I feel like I still have so much to improve at, but most importantly, improving still feels very doable. What I mean by this is that learning Japanese is cumulative. As long as you keep going at a consistent pace, you're pretty much bound to improve even if leveling up becomes slower over time, and I feel like I'm exactly at the point where my newbie gains are long gone, meaning that I need to do much more volume in order to make noticeable progress, but at the same time, I still have plenty of low hanging fruit in areas where I have a limited amount of experience in, with one of them most definitely being reading. Thus far, I've been immersing almost exclusively with audio based content, but since last year, I did read about 25 Wikipedia pages and a few blog posts, which in total amounted to about 100 hours of reading practice, and honestly, I'd say that my reading ability is totally fine in the sense that I got so much carryover just from doing an enormous amount of Anki reviews and watching videos with primarily Japanese subtitles, so just with the tiny bit of reading practice I did on top of that, I feel like I got my reading ability up to par do very should be, which makes me believe that I don't really need to practice reading separately. However, I still feel like there might be a few benefits to reading that could be worth exploring. One of them is the possibility that there might be vocabulary or expressions that are almost exclusively used in text-based content, especially in novels. But I'm not sure how true or significant that difference is, especially if you don't plan on reading such forms of content regardless, which is also the position that I've been in for the longest time. I've never been a big reader outside of audiobooks, especially when it comes to nonfiction. However, one of the reasons why is most likely the fact that I haven't put in the work required to actually discover something that I would naturally want to read. I feel like this could be a huge missed opportunity as there most likely are books or manga out there that I might really enjoy, which in the long term can help me rack up thousands of hours of immersion, the value of which might go beyond learning the language. And I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to talk a bit about the first book and manga I ever read in Japanese. Back in July, I made a video where I ordered a book and two manga directly from Japan, and the book I chose was Confessions of a Mask by Yukio Mishima, which I knew was going to be very difficult, not only because the author is known to use lavish vocabulary and expressions, but also because I had already read it in English a few years prior, and even that version was surprisingly challenging. I decided to start from the book to save the presumably less demanding manga for later, and even though I knew that the book was going to be potentially really difficult, I still underestimated how difficult it was actually going to be, as as soon as I opened it up, I was greeted by dozens of unknown words already on the first few pages. Not only were there plenty of words that I had never seen before, but many of the ones that I had were using alternative or archaic forms of kanji, which resulted in me having to do up to 30 lookups per page that occasionally made the book feel quote unquote unreadable, because keep in mind that it was a physical book. The way I performed lookups was that I took a picture of a page with Google Lens, I selected a word that I didn't know, I read its Japanese definition and most of the time also looked it up on shisho.org as well as on Anki to make sure that it wasn't a word that I've already mined, and finally I pasted it into a notes channel as an experiment to see how many unknown words I'll come by in total, and that number ended up becoming over 1000. 
For a book that's 230 pages long, with the pages also being relatively small, that's quite a lot. Now of course, a few hundred of those words were definitely ones that I knew but just didn't recognize as they used different kanji, but that still doesn't change the fact that reading this book was incredibly painful, especially in the physical sense, as I had to constantly do lookups on every page via my phone using OCR. I was actually so close to restarting sentence mining and making cards for the entire book, but ultimately what prevented me from doing that was just the fact that I could not find a digital copy of this book pretty much anywhere. Although. I did discover that this book somehow happens to be listed on jpdb.io and even though the automatic difficulty rating is completely wrong because it's heavily biased towards the overall length of the book, when I was scrolling through this website sorted by difficulty, I couldn't find a single novel that had a unique word ratio as high as this one as most of them hovered between 20 to 40% while Confessions of a Mask had 52%. And I do believe that this book is as hard as it gets in the sense that even though I'm sure there is completely cryptic literature out there as well, I find it unlikely that I'd actually read something of that nature and the good news is that I very rarely had to look up words that I already had in my Anki deck which really goes to show the impact that Anki can have and it also indicates that as long as I keep increasing my vocabulary, eventually even hard books such as this one will become readable with relative ease. While I'm sure that the book had plenty of obscure words that I'll never see again in my life, when I asked a native about how many of those words in that list they were able to understand out of context, the impression I got was that as long as they were actually reading the book and saw the furigana written next to many of those difficult kanji, most natives would be able to understand a large part of the book without having to do many lookups, but that doesn't yet apply to me. And it's not like every word I encountered was obscure, as a few of them even had the JLPT N1 and N2 labels on jisho.org, which makes it highly likely that I'll probably encounter hundreds of those new words again in the future. The significance of this is once again relevant to the question of whether or not I should continue adding cards to Anki, or should I from now on just learn words by looking them up over and over again as I naturally encounter them and hope that I'll eventually memorize them in the process. The benefit of the latter method would be that I wouldn't have to spend time on Anki and that I'd only quote unquote memorize words that actually matter as the other ones won't come up commonly enough to enter long term memory. But the downside is that there is a very high chance that I'll be painfully and time consumingly looking up the same words over and over again without even realizing, which is something that actually happened a lot when I was reading this book and overall I feel like I retained very little of what I actually looked up. The obvious answer to me is that if I plan on reading difficult paper-based media in the future as well and would like to improve my comprehension even further, then I'd much prefer to just increase my baseline fluency as much and as soon as possible by using Anki instead of learning by constantly having to go through the same tedious experience that I went through with this book, but whether or not I'll actually want to read paper-based books of this difficulty in the near future as well is simply something that I don't know yet, so whether or not this book would have been worth mining isn't something that that's entirely clear. After finishing the book, I allowed for a few days to pass before moving on to the manga that had already been waiting for its turn to be read for several months. The manga I chose was Monotone Blue by Nagabe and I had no clue as to what to expect, both in terms of the manga itself as well as what the reading experience was going to be like, considering that I had only read around 6 hours of manga in total, with most of it being during the immersion challenge that I did in the summer of 2021. I expected that I'll be reading the manga in a similar bit by bit manner to the book so I assumed that it was going to take me at least a couple of weeks to finish considering its thickness, but to my surprise, from the moment I started reading, I got completely hooked to the extent that in a span of what felt like 30 minutes, I ended up reading 107 pages in a row and came out that I had actually been reading for over 2 hours. It was my first time ever reading a physical manga, so I was stunned by the print quality and I enjoyed the textured feeling of the paper that was slightly soft to the touch, and I just couldn't help but slowly 
totally appreciate all the small details on each of the panels, and overall, the atmosphere I felt kind of reminded me of the distant faint memories of reading a bedtime story. I actually had to force myself to stop reading, as not only was my original plan to just read for around 15 minutes before going to sleep, but also because I didn't want the experience to be over in just one day. It came out that the 107 pages I had read were more than half the manga, which was a bit surprising considering how much thicker it was compared to the book. This is also why, on the following days, I reread a portion of the previous chapter before moving on to the next one to make sure I hadn't forgotten anything and so I could appreciate what I had already read a bit more. In terms of the Japanese, I only encountered 13 words across the entire manga that I didn't have in my Anki deck, but I was able to understand most of them just from the kanji and context alone. However, there were a few other things that occasionally kind of tripped me up as well, such as slang in written form or just my general lack of experience with manga, but overall, reading it felt natural to the extent that for the most part, it didn't even really cross my mind that I was in fact reading in Japanese, making it obviously a really different experience compared to the book. I actually decided to make a few wonky cards from the manga as well, for the reasons that I described earlier in the video, but also because I just liked the manga so much that I wanted to have a few cards to remind me of it in the future when I do my reviews. However, I can definitely say that unlike with the book, I am already at the level where I don't need to increase my baseline fluency to throughoutly enjoy reading manga at this level of difficulty. I didn't even mind looking up the few words that I actually didn't understand for the simple reason that they were rare to the extent that it was more of exciting to see what kind of new words I was able to learn from the manga that I was genuinely really really enjoying. I actually enjoyed it so much more than I expected. Even though in the video where I received the manga I said that I was very excited to read it, it still took me multiple months before I actually had and took the time to start doing that and since I knew nothing about the manga I didn't yet know what to expect nor how enjoyable it was going to be in reality but I never expected to enjoy it as much as I actually did. Besides just finding it fun, interesting, and really enjoying the art, a big part of the reason why I enjoyed the manga so much was actually because it hit me really hard. For multiple days after having finished it, I was in a completely different headspace and because of that I also saw everything from a completely different perspective. Admittedly, that headspace was melancholic to the extent that it hurt, but it wasn't entirely forlorn for I felt that I was able to form a stronger self by seeing things from that different perspective as it was void of the social conditionings that cause us to adapt traits and patterns that aren't entirely aligned with our essence. However overpowering it might have felt and however reclusive it might have made me at the time, it was also incredibly inspiring and to this day I feel like I've gained something unquantifiable that cannot be evaluated in simple practical terms. But already from the moment these feelings started seeping in, I knew that they were going to be temporary, which is why I tried my best to remind myself to not forget the lessons learned from this state of mind once it inevitably starts fading away, returning me back to reality and old habits alongside. This is also why I didn't move on to the next manga right away. I wanted to keep on daydreaming and absorbing the atmosphere that kept lingering on for quite a while, which I wasn't yet ready to abandon. In relation to this, recently I've only grown more and more inclined towards the notion that stories, especially fiction, can have tremendous power in terms of helping us find meaning and significance in both the intricate as well as the more mundane aspects of life. The ideals derived from fiction can be used as a compass for navigating reality precisely for the seemingly oxymoronic reason that that it lacks a material connection to reality as that's what makes them more malleable and resistant to conflicts that might arise if the inspiration she received didn't come from a vacuum. It's not that everyone, or most likely anyone, is going to have the same experience that I had with this particular manga, but that's also the beauty of fiction in the sense that as long as you have a sufficient level of awareness and insight that will allow you to derive meaning from stories, then what you'll gain will be entirely subjective and rather unpredictable, especially if the stars align and you embark on the right journey at the right time. In June of this year, I hit 20,000 Anki cards, after which I decided to start consistent output practice for pretty much the first time, and ever since then, I've been having written conversations in Japanese almost daily, and I can definitely say that it has gotten a lot easier compared to when I first got started 5 months ago. 
It's not necessarily that my Japanese has improved, but instead I've just expressed the same things over and over again to the extent that I've naturally developed my recall ability and adopted speech patterns that allow me to communicate much smoother with a lot more confidence as I don't have to slowly think about everything I'm about to say. Even though my Japanese is still far from perfect, I feel like I'm able to have conversations about pretty much anything as even if I am having some trouble, usually I'll still manage to get my point across one way or another another. I also don't really worry too much about making mistakes or learning bad habits as those problems will get smoothed out over time and I'm pretty confident in this because my English used to be completely broken when I first got started as well, yet it has naturally come to the point where it is now. Also, once I started outputting, I began noticing grammar points and expressions that would have been perfectly fitting in recent conversations I had had, essentially making immersion even more valuable than it already was. With this considered, I can definitely imagine that there could be many benefits to getting started with output practice from early on, however, personally I don't regret starting only now, as thanks to having built a solid baseline, my output has been improving quite quickly and pretty much entirely effortlessly, as for the most part, I haven't had to deal with any of the frustrations that I would have experienced back when my comprehension as well as my ability to express myself in a wide variety of scenarios was still rather lacking. In fact, the output practice I've been doing has almost exclusively been in the form of written conversations, but at this point I don't even look at it as practice as much as I just see it as myself chatting with a friend. Out of the millions of messages I've sent, the thousands of comments I've written, all the videos I've ever made and so on, I've never considered any of them as a means to practice English and similarly, I feel like if there is anything I would like to learn quote unquote naturally on this journey, it would be outputting. This is also why I haven't really practiced speaking as even in English I've never been a big fan of voice chats which regardless aren't something I can viably do every single day, so instead of artificially forcing myself to practice speaking I'd rather wait for the time and the opportunity where I could just naturally speak Japanese, not for the sake of practice but instead because there is something I want to or need to do and using Japanese is just a part of it. An example of this could be the video I made a few weeks ago which was entirely in Japanese and and even though I didn't speak perfectly in that video, whilst I was making it, I was actually surprised at how doable it felt, especially considering that I didn't even use a script nor properly plan everything beforehand. Essentially, there is no real reason why I couldn't make even more videos if I wanted to, which also might be pretty good practice considering that my English sounded noticeably different in my earlier videos compared to now, and I barely ever speak English outside of making these videos. Additionally, I also made two videos featuring italki this year, where I spoke with various Japanese teachers and even though I do feel like my Japanese obviously had and still has a lot of room to improve, in a way I already feel comfortable with the idea of using my Japanese in the real world if I ever went to Japan. Also, now that I started outputting and stopped sentence mining, I've also stopped time tracking my immersion because it has become so randomized that accurate tracking would be really tedious, especially considering that even activities such as reading the messages I received during outputting are essentially a form of personalized input, yet they're so scattered throughout the day that it's almost impossible to properly track. While I still think that tracking your immersion is a fantastic way to make sure you're being consistent, like I already mentioned, the Japanese input I receive has slowly started shifting away from being a means to an end of learning the language to just being a part of my daily life. I definitely still have an eye to improving in mind when I decide to consume something in Japanese instead of English, but that doesn't mean that learning the language can't be a part of the experience. For example, whilst I was making this video, I looked back at the first video in this series and I paused at a scene where I showed a clip of a book from Skyrim, and it's funny how easily I can read it now considering that back then it probably would have taken me ages just to decipher a single page. And overall, such walls of text now feel much less daunting, which can most likely be attributed to the experience I had with reading Confessions of a Mask. On top of that, there is an additional level of satisfaction in being able to finally consume content like this after all the time it took for it to become viable, and I also feel like it can be a more enriching experience compared to reading in a language that you're otherwise completely comfortable with. For example, I would love to do every quest in OSRS whilst reading all the dialogue, all the books, scrolls, and so on from start to finish if the game actually had a native Japanese localization, but at the same time, I'm also inspired to read more difficult literature that, even though would be much safer to read in English, I'm way more interested in reading them in Japanese. 
and I feel like this is a clear indicator that there still are plenty of things that I look forward to doing both right now, as well as in the future as my Japanese improves, so I don't really plan on stopping learning anytime soon. That being said, the line between what's actual dedicated study instead of just improving a side effect through daily life has become rather blurry, but that's also just a natural transition of going from the pre-grind to the quote-unquote real world, in the sense that even if I dedicate much less time on directly improving my Japanese via things such as Anki or sentence running, as long as I naturally keep using or stay exposed to Japanese on a daily basis, it's highly likely that I'll keep on improving. Keep in mind that Japanese is a skill that's going to be with me for my entire life, and even if it took me 5 years to reach the point where I am now, that is a small amount of time in the grand scheme of things, especially considering everything I've received during the process, and most likely the same is going to apply for the next 5 years to come, as long as I keep proactively facing the present. If you're wondering where I was able to get the manga and the book I talked about earlier in the video, I recommend checking out the video I made a few months ago where I ordered them through a service called Pai, who were also kind enough to sponsor this part of this video. Pai is a service that lets you buy pretty much anything from real Japanese stores and marketplaces without having to actually live in Japan. In fact, the book, the do manga, and the game this guy bought from Japan through Pai were all from secondhand markets, which means that you can potentially have access to certain products as well as at prices that otherwise would be pretty much impossible to find anywhere else, especially outside of Japan. This is also really true when it comes to buying immersion material for learning Japanese, as it's really hard to find certain literature, games, manga and so on in Japanese outside of Japan, which is also the scenario that I was in until Bai reached out to me and I was able to get my hands on my first ever physical Japanese content. They also have special features as well as occasional partnerships with certain Japanese stores and in my video I also checked out some albums, keyboards and other various articles that were interesting to browse through and to this day I occasionally still visit the website to check the listings of certain products to get a sense of what buying them would cost if I were to for example ever live in Japan. The way ordering from Bai works is that you can just add whatever you want from multiple different marketplaces to your shopping cart and after paying, Bai orders all of the products from the sellers and once the items have arrived at Bai's warehouse, they will be combined into a single package prepared for international shipping and sent directly to you. This video will include a discount link in the description and I really recommend checking out the video where I actually went through the entire experience of browsing, ordering and later unboxing everything I bought through Bai, including the manga and the book that I shared my experience of in this video. Domo konnichiwa. Hakuchin Tansei Kaijin ga VR chat de Nihon native o shock suru ke YouTuber. じゃない。やる気ですはいまあついにまあ、はい、こんばんは。こんにちは。はい、はい、はい。うちらいさんチップです。何ですかそれ。ああ、あれはフィッシュアンチップス。あ、なるほどですね。ポテト、ポテトチップス、フィッシュアンチップス。なるほど。あ
まあ私は韓国のアクセントにあんまりあんまり詳しくないんですけど確かになんか韓国なんかそういう感じが韓国です韓国韓国ですなんかそういう感じかなうんそうだねえ日本では今は結構夜遅いんですね夜の3時半うんそうですねでもまあ週末ですからあんまり問題ないですねうんそうだねペイクピカチュウエミッキュウエミッキュウエミッキュウこんばんはこんばんはちょわよあ韓国語上手上手本当あ嬉しい<笑>あ上手日本人はねおるだけあなるほど AS メーカーはどこにあ中国あ,あ、なるほど。<笑>全然気づいてなかった。昔、子供のどこにところでめっちゃ韓国のドラマが見る。私は韓国ドラマをあんまり見たことないんですけど、一つの映画を見たことあるあ。なんかオールドボーイとかの名前でしたけど。あ、オールドボーイ。あー、オールドボーイ。見たことある。あー、はいはい。僕、僕の推しの映画を。推し、推し。オールドボーイ。映画。いや、結構良かったですね。面白かった。ああ、オールドボーイ。マジであのバーニーさんは日本語がうまい。<笑>いや、ありがとうあ。ちなみに名前を読めないんですけど、トカゲさんの今、どんな県に住んでいますか今大阪にいるよ。ああ、大阪ですか。好きですか大阪は。ほんまや。大阪、大阪いいよ。ああ大阪いい,い,い。私もあのいつか日本に行ったら、うん、あのなんかおすすめの、うん。場所とかがありますか大阪とかにえっとね、日本は、これは違う。都会より田舎の方がいいかも。お<笑>行くときはお、ね。都会は意外と、江ノ島。江ノ島,島。うん。九州行ったらいいと思う。おえー。北海道じゃないあの、熊本。なるほど、あのーうかうん、私もなんか、田舎が面白そうかもしれないと思った。そう、田舎の方がいい。えー、いいですね。あの会話ね、つまらない。<笑>そうですね。まあ私はちょっと都会も見たいんですけど、田舎でなんか都会で見られない生活を見えるんですから、面白そう。そうだね。そして自然ですね。日本の自然が面白そうかもしれない。山,山と川と。そうですね。こっちは何時なのあ今は夜。8時ですけど、なんか朝7時で起きたので、ちょっとなんか疲れたので。めっちゃ健康的な時間やん。そうですけど、私は実はあのいつもほぼ毎日起きる時が1時間遅れちゃうから、もうすぐあの昼になってしまう。そしてその後また遅くなるし。早くなるしあの、毎日1時間ほどああの進んでいるんですから。なるほどね。ずれるんだ。そうですね。<笑>でも、幸いあの、なんかそういう仕事がないあの、こういう時で起きる必要がないから、こういう生活できるんですから。いいね。うん。幸いって言ったはい。<笑>めっちゃちゃんとした,、ね、したね。自然に幸いが出てくる。あ,あ、そうですか。アジア,アジア言語、コンプリートしたいな。コンプリート。うん、韓国、中国。じゃあ、一番簡単なのが日本人に対してあのあコ,リコリアン、韓国語。そうだね。日本語と形が一緒だよね。文法が。あ、そうですか。なんか聞いたことがあるんですけど。あ,あ,あんまり詳しくない私はなんか発音的にも韓国人が日本語を学んだ時に発音が結構良さそうですね,ね日本語と同じ発音の言葉がある<笑>うんあの植民地だった時に本語教育をしたからあーあーはいはいなるほどおあこんばんは<笑>こんばんは。ああ、アズメーカー。こんばんは。ああ、まさかさん。珍しいですね。あなたがファイフレンドプラスじゃないところにいるなんて。えー、上手。あ、日本人じゃないの。私の日本語は上手。上手だね。いや、これに日本人。ありがとう。上手上手。日本語上手。上手上手だ。いいよいいよ。上手だよ。日本人食べません。日本人食べません。日本語わかりません。わかりません。飲めません。わかりません。飲めません。
。飲めません。上手。上手。朝さん。飲んでなくない。うんいや、飲んでないよ。あ、そレ,レモン、レモンティー飲んでる。<笑>レモンティー、お茶か。<笑>お茶飲んでるのね。そっか。ジュース飲んでるよ、アップルジュース。あーアップルジュース。あー、おいしいね、アップルジュース。アップルジュース。青森エッポン。青森限定。青森限定。<笑>限定なの。<笑>なんでそんな日本語うまいの。限定。いやいや青森限定どうぞ。いやいや、どうぞどうぞ。いやいや、いやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいや、雪触るために。え、ちょっと待って、普通は雪,雪を滑りに行くんだけど、触りに行くの、君は。え<笑>え、おもしろいな。雪祭りの時行ったらいいよ。あの自衛隊が雪を。あの人形のか人形じゃないいろんな形に大きく作って見せてくれる雪祭りってやってるからえー、あるうん、えーうん、ネットで調べてごらん雪祭り北海道はたか男祭りしてるしてるいやあんた,<笑>あんただいぶおかしいことになってるよ<笑>今はここにめっちゃ雪が積もってるもんここでも北海道の雪かき技術を借りたいあえ,えそんなに積もるどこの人あのエストニア、結構エストニア、北の方ですから、雪が結構リトビア降る。ラトビア、エストニアかなはい、そうですね。バルト三国や。バルト,、はい、バルト三国。<笑>ね、うん。最近ニュースになったよね,ね。バルト三国ってニュースになったよね。な,なんだっけ私の友達にウクライナ人がいるんですよ。あれですわ。アニメオタクでね、その彼は。<笑>えー、でジョジョが好きでそれからなんだっけ変身するロボットがあったよねアメリカの映画で、はいはいはい、なんだっけえー、っと名前が出てこないや形の変わるやつね車からロボットになったりトランスフォーマーしかなあそうそうそうトランスフォーマートランスフォーマーオタクでもあるんだよねその彼は<笑>なるほど彼自体は日本語はほぼほぼ喋れないからあんまり詳しくは話したことないんだけどねあなるほどだけど一応友達だからよく現れてはいきなりトランスフォーマーごっこを仕掛けてくるんだよねその子は彼<笑>なるほどかわいい,<笑>い,いですね仲良しだそういきなり現れてマーサートランスフォーマーがなんじゃらかんじゃらって言い出すんだがあはいはいはいって話聞いてるんだけどね<笑><笑>でもなんか東のヨーロッパの人が結構あのそういう人が多いらしいあの日本好きアニメ好きの人が結構多いあ本当にへえそうですねあのロシア人もウクライナ人も結構あの人気あのそういうアニメとかが日本のコンテンツがあそうなんですねうん,うん2日前やったかな日本で流行ってるスナック菓子は何があるのとか言って聞いてきましたけどね<笑>何を変身したそんな感じでよく喋ってます。日本のスナック菓子ね。はい。どんなのがあるか教えてっていう話だったんで、マルボーロと教えてあげました。あなるほど。知らないでしょ安いです、ね。マルボール知ってます知ってます。あの、めっちゃ安いやつでしたっけあ,あ、ちっちゃい丸いやつじゃなくてね、平べったい丸いやつ。ああ。知らないでしょああ、マルボーロ。マルボーロ。ああ、あ、知らない。はい。か、う、た、んうん、くないんですよクッキーみたいにかたくなくてあ、はいはい、パンよりは少しかたいそんな感じですなるほどあのー、いつか日本に私が行ったらあの、うん、食べてみますうんそうですね探して食べてみてくださいはい<笑>ありがとう今日が初めてこんばんは VR チャットはいやー今日は初めてじゃなくてけど今年は初めてです。はい。あ、なるほど。まあ、毎年一回ぐらいします。あ、そういうことですか。かわい,い
、はい、まだまだ,だけねちょっとだけですねはい,はいせっかくだからフレンドしませんかできますはいフレンドにはいじゃあよろしくお願いしますはいよろしくお願いしますはいはい,、はい、はいありがとうはい、あらまあ、日本語がわかりません。<笑>いいですね、<笑>そのあわた。あ<笑>あ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、わ、おわりん。おわりん。おわ、おわ、それかりん。ああ、ああ、りん、りんさん。いやしやし。りんさん、りんさんっていうことは日本人じゃないってこと。<笑>日本人、リアルネーム日本人。<笑>リアルネーム日本人ってどういうこと。りん、りんさんっていう。<笑>日本、第二日本人。<笑>在日日本人<笑>在日日本人なのね<笑>ああなるほどね日本人は在日してるのが当たり前だったんだけどそうかそういう考え方もあったか<笑>イエスイエス在日日本人ね<笑>在日日本人<笑>在日日本人のリンさんも、えー、とフレンドしていいですか、はい、あお願いしますはいじゃあよろしくお願いします僕もフレンドしてもいいですか<笑>はいえあなた知ってるよあ,<笑>あなた知ってるよ<笑>あこの人にリンさんあリンさんにねいいよいいよああ、じゃあ私は自分のホームグラウンドに帰りますねまた会いましょうえなんでお疲れなんで友達に会いに行くから<笑>あはいお疲れ様ですはいはいじゃあねまたね,ねお疲れ様ですバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイバイはい、私もそろそろ行きます。あの結構遅くなってるから、はい、よ疲れてるし、はい、お疲れ様バイバイ。お疲れ様。またねー。またねー。バイバイ。バイバイ。あのエキシットバットは見つからないんですけど、<笑>どうやって<笑>。<笑><笑>あれアルトアルトエフエフまあそれを使いますはい<笑>バイバイ<笑>オーケー<笑>はいってなわけで今年の VR チャットコーナーでしたまあ正直もはや言いたいことがそれほどないんですねもちろんその1時間のにぎやかな会話の中で不自然なところとかちょっと滑舌が悪かった場合とかいろいろあったんですけどまあそれ以外に会話を普通にできますねさっきあの昨年の動画を見返しましたけど別に今年の会話の中で私が言ったことが超複雑とかになっていないんですけど昨年に比べたらやっぱり会話をする時に感じることが全く違うんですね個人的になぜならまあ平たく言えば問題なく全部聞き取りますし言葉とか表現とかを結構簡単に思い出せるようになったししかも思い出せない場合でもなんか他の言葉で同じ意味を伝えられるようにもなったしそれの全てにおいて話せることも増えたしまあたった1年の結果でそれほどの調達があったっていうことに大満足していますはいまあというわけで5年間日本語を勉強したことの結果は完璧ではなくてもついに会話を普通にできるようになりましたはいこれからもよろしくお願いします。And thus concludes my fifth year of learning Japanese. I still vividly remember the day I got started as if it were yesterday, where I didn't even know a single hiragana character. Yet by now, I've learned over 20,000 words and can conversate in Japanese without big issues. And in a way, I feel like I've finally made it. I've actually learned Japanese. The journey thus far has been incredibly long, but I'm glad to say that I don't regret a single day out of the nearly 2000 days that it has taken me thus far, and I'm sure the same will apply for years to come, as it's still far from over. Like I said before, there is still so much for me to discover and so much that I'd like to explore, which is also why I decided to once again start making Anki cards at my own pace. And finally, there is also something that I haven't mentioned yet, which is that only around a month from now, in early 2024, I'm finally going to Japan for the very first time in my life. Test results have revealed that you are.